In this video, we're going to demonstrate how you can start a session where your students can join in from their own device for instant assessment and collaboration. So we have an activity open already, and there's a couple of different ways that I could start the session. Uh, the simplest, I can just go up to the top and choose Start Session. So when I choose Start Session, uh, it's going to bring up a presentation setup dialog. And the main things that you want to pay attention to, I just really want to choose my class roster, if I want to save the results, um, and am I going to provide wrong, wrong feedback, or am I going to allow them to change their answer. So, so no matter what this looks like, you're going to have those options. I'm going to choose uh, one of my pre-made classes. It's in my grade four class. And I'm going to choose to autosave uh, just to the desktop and click OK. So once I've started a session, you'll see that we have a toolbar and I can move this wherever I want the toolbar so that it's out of my way. On the toolbar, you have a couple different options. I can see how many people have joined my session and if I'm posing a question, it will show me how many have responded to that question already. I can view the response data I can call on students at random. I can adjust collaboration controls. I'm going to show that more once we have students that have already joined into the session. So there's two ways that students can join. And once you've started a session, students can join that session from any tablet using the Quizdom Notes Plus app, which you can download in the App Store for Windows, Android, or iOS. So here we're going to open up the Quizdom Notes Plus application. We can choose File. Find Session, I can select the proper session, and I can join the session. If we're doing this from a Chromebook or a web browser, uh, it's a slightly different process. Uh, it, it can list the IP address that they can join through. They can type in the address, the IP address there, and join the session that way. And again, if the student, if I'm using a class roster, they'll need to type in their student ID so that they can join. And now I have two different students that have joined the session. If you look down here, it's showing me zero of two students have responded. I can bring up this little class icon here and I can see who have joined. Uh, these are the students who have already joined my session. Both Kate and Mike have joined. And this dialog here is what we actually use to allow them to collaborate and share content back to the main screen. So if I wanted to allow everybody to be able to draw on their device, annotate, share those objects back to the main screen, this is where I would turn that control on. So we're going to step through in our lesson just to show you what this looks like. So as I navigate forward, the student device is going to follow along with me as well. And I might want students to identify what are the key terms that they should be paying attention to in this. And I can have students share that content to the main screen so they can annotate on their device and share that back as well. So that's that instant, uh, instant collaboration and sharing of content back and forth between the student devices. And you'll notice they're following along. As I progress through the activity, once I'm in a session, at any time, if I wanted to pose questions, all I need to do is go to the voting tool section, and I might pose a new question spontaneously right from within the polling or voting tools. In this particular case, we're talking about two rows of four flowers, so four plus four equals. We could simply pose a numeric question here, and the students would have to type in the answer, and I can see how they've responded. So here I had one student that answered with seven, one student that answered with eight. So I can bring up that chart data, and it's tracking all the data behind the scenes. I know that Mike got it wrong, that Kate did not get it, or Mike got it right, Kate did not get it right. So it's tracking their time, it's tracking how my class performs, and I can use that in reporting data afterwards. So that's one way you can pose questions. Just spontaneously at any time, you have different tools, I have multiple choice. I have yes or no, I have true or false, numeric. We also have sequencing, place these items in the correct order, which step should I take first, rating scale, 
text response as well as multiple mark response. So which of the following are correct? And I'd have to know to check both A and C in a multiple response type. So, so really, really simple instant polling. And again, you can use this over the top of any document. You can use this as you're just annotating freehand in the classroom. You don't have to have pre-made content, but it gives you a great way to do instant assessment in the classroom. Another way that you can pose questions is using widgets. We're going to step back to the math tools here since we're teaching a math topic. And we're going to build our own number sentence. And once I put an equal sign on that, I get this arrow at the end of it. And anywhere where you see this styled arrow related to an object, that allows you to instantly pose a question. So if I click that, now the students know that they're needing to answer that. Again, the answer in this particular case was, was 8. I can view the results. It knows what the right answer was because that was set from the widget directly and it can track their progress. So those are two different ways that you can pose questions for instant assessment with your, with your class. You can use the instant polling options in the boat tools section, or you can use any of the widgets that have that arrow out on them. When you press the arrow, it's going to pose a question. If you haven't started a session yet, that will actually prompt you to start a session as well. And then the last way that you can pose questions, the slides can actually be set up as questions ahead of time. So as we've gone through our lesson here, uh, we came to a slide where we're actually starting automatically to instantly assess understanding. So we're going to pose a question, how many toy cars are there? Um, they're going to need to be able to know the right answer on that. In this particular case, it's multiple choice. They can respond in. And because there is a correct answer on this, it can give them instant right-wrong feedback. And I can share that to the group. Again, how well did you guys perform? Did you get it right or wrong? Or I might step through and work the solution out step by step. So if I click on the answer slide down at the bottom, it's going to work me through that problem step by step. And of course, I can have students interact with this at any point as well. So if I wanted students to, to give me another example, um, can you give me another example of the, that would provide the same answer instead of two rows of five cars? Uh, they might say, you know, that five times two cars would give them the same answer, so they could have five rows of two cars or whatever. So my students can interact from their device, uh, and we can have instant assessment and polling as well. And then when you're done with the session, um, I can just either click on the toolbar there and choose End Session, or I can go up to End Session up in the sprocket to end that active live session where I'm communicating and instantly assessing with my students.